Hi, we are now in Unit 2, and the Unit 2 topics presentation and language style and the facilitator for this unit is Professor Owajaje Juliet in Negwidium. So now let's get started. By introduction, writing for online learners is quite different from when you are writing for the conventional learners. Now, you must consider the presentation style and the language style. The use of these two makes or mar the online learning system. If you use it well, it will improve, and if you don't use it well, it will lose focus. So therefore, attention must be given to every aspect when you are writing for an online course. How do we give attention? This is the focus of this section. Now, let's look at the presentation style. Online content deals mostly with integration of media elements into the content. There are so many media elements that can be combined to create online content. Here is a guide on how most of these can be used and integrated when you are combining. Remember when you selected the resources, some of these resources, they are in textual form, some are videos, some could be illustrations, some are diagrams and the like. So how do you integrate them? Now let us look at tips for using tests. Let's take tests first. Avoid clumsy display and provide best readability and clarity. When you have your OER and you are integrating it, ensure that it's able to come up in a way that it can be read. So if it cannot be read, you don't need to integrate it. You may use diagram, flowchart, graphs to help the learners understand, because these are some of the things you could get to using the OER, but must be consistent with the graphic convention. For example, interlinks or both type should be used for the same purpose. So you must be consistent when you are doing this. Then provide list of table to help learners to organize their information. Then give attention to avoid the word and role spacing in the area of readability. Now, tips for using graphics, because there are times you have to use graphics as OER. What are those guiding points? Now, graphics include illustrations, pictures, diagrams, tables, icons, and images. In online content, graphics can be used to draw attention. Suggestion, support, illustrations, then understanding to simulate learning. So in this case, you use it to motivate the learners and not to demotivate the learners. So avoid the use of graphics that do not complement the information that are in the content. Where you need to use graphic is more complement the information you have in the content. Now, when you are dealing with animations, there are tips too that you could use when dealing with animations. Let learners focus on one object at a time. Then use less animation or text. It could be destructive to the learners. Then segment complex animations. Put them in segment, put them in parts so that it will be understood and easy for the learners to walk through. With this case, you can just provide the button on a click. They can move by stage by stage instead of lumping everything together as one. Then animation should only be used to enhance the content and must not be destructive. You don't do animation because, oh, I just want to make it. No, it shouldn't be destructive, but rather it should help to enhance the content. Now, looking at the use of audio also, Sometimes you have some audio content you want to give in. Now, let your audio be short because the students would have been reading and they need to listen to some other things. Let it be short, maybe five minutes, between five to 10 minutes. Use audios to complement the virtual test on the screen. That yes, it can be used. Then uh, provide questions or explanation or further explanation to enhance what you have in the video or audio because it will help the student to walk through. They minimize the use of extraneous audios, such as background music and sound. Wherever you need to use it, don't let it be too loud, because it's not everybody 
that is friendly with background music. Some people are comfortable with it, but some they are not. So you remember you have different learning styles of people that are going. So now let's look at the videos, the tips for using videos. When with video, you can reproduce, you uh, reproduce the behavior of what you have in the processes. And at the same time, you can reproduce the procedure in the way that they appear in as if they are real. So it is good media for presenting role play, case studies and the like. But however, make sure that you accompany video sequence with comments in either text or audio. Because as you are using the video, let there be a sequence, something that will show in a textual form or audio to explain what you are doing. Not all students may have access to large bandwidth. So let your video be short because sometimes there could be issue for them to watch it. Remember, it's online. Then use videos to explain major concepts. It may not be everything. Use it to explain major concepts. Write your script and create a storyboard. That will help when you are preparing your video. These tips will guide when selecting and using OER medias. Now, the language style is very important. At the time you are writing, remember you have collected your OER content. And like I said in the last video, that you must have a leading statement before you present the OER. So in your language style, write it in a simple and clear language. If you are using English, let it be clear. Any language you are using, let it be clear in that language. And the rule of the terms that says that a sentence should not be longer than 25 words, follow it because too much long sentence could be confusing to comprehend. And it will avoid cultural specific uh, slang. No, avoid jargons when you are writing. They minimize the use of compound sentences because using compound sentences could be confusing to some readers and not easy to comprehend. Use gender inclusive. For example, you instead of saying, over the years, men continually disobey God's order. You could say, over the years, people. Because when you say men, you say, oh, it's only men. Women are not involved. But when you say people, you are incorporating them. Then use active words and not passive. Again, spell out the acronyms in full at first usage. Where you want to use acronyms in the first use, spell it out before you start writing it subsequently in acronym. Then finally, use personal pronouns when you are writing for online learners. It's the same thing as when you are writing for distance learners. E.g., you, when you are uh, referring to the learner. This make your learner feel your presence and know, oh, it's talking to me. So when you are writing, the language style is very, very important. In summary, presentation styles deal with the way you present text, graphics, illustration, animations, audio, and the language writing. Then again, the learner or the user of the online content. The style of presentation could motivate the learner to learn or discourage the learner from learning. So the style of presenting an online content must be such that we make a learning interesting. Thank you for listening.